I was going to take a point of personal privilege earlier, but I was a little overwhelmed by the tone policing that was happening by my colleagues, so I had to take a step away. I love you, Senator John Kavanaugh. You are an amazing example of what a man should be, of what a father should be, of what a brother should be. And I am so privileged to serve in this body with you. It is an honor. I had written remarks that I was going to say this morning, but they no longer feel right or appropriate. I believe in the freedom of speech, and I know that the speech on this floor is protected speech. But it is misguided to think that there is a same thing between appropriate speech and protected speech. Yes, it's protected, but no, it is not appropriate. And no, it should not be tolerated. And to Senator Slama's point, we should have some mechanism to address inappropriate speech. But we don't, and we have failed ourselves, and we have failed Nebraska in that point. I am so sorry to all of the people who have been harmed by the discussion last night, both inside this body, men and women, and outside of this body. It was not appropriate, and it was not who we are. And it is clearly not something we should tolerate. I want to be careful with what I say because I see some students up in the balcony. Hi. Some fourth graders. We're having a debate about First Amendment freedom of speech. We're having a little bit of a disagreement over that, but this actually is a lot about you all and, and school and education. What's appropriate? versus freedom of speech. There's a lot of things that people can say that are covered under freedom of speech, but they probably shouldn't say them in front of you. So I'm not gonna say any of them in front of you today. I hope that we will move forward with the seriousness of this body and the seriousness that Nebraska deserves. I'm fine. I went home last night and I got to snuggle with my snug -and -ug, my middle child. She was still awake when I got home and she wanted me to lay in bed with her until she fell asleep. So I did. And I stroked her hair and I rubbed her back and I kind of hummed to her. And it was wonderful. I'm fine. I'm hurt, I'm upset, but at the end of the day, I'm fine. I have a full life. I get to work with my brother, who's an amazing human being. And I have colleagues who are willing to stand up and defend me, and defend this body, and defend the public. So I'm fine. I will say that yes, what we say here is protected speech. But what we say off the mic, that's different. And yesterday before the dinner break, Senator Halloran came up to myself and Senator Walls and started telling us what was in that passage that he read into the microphone. He started describing it to us. So when he says that this wasn't directed at me, 
even though he did invoke my name at the start of his remarks before he invoked my brother's name, and then he dropped the first name, when he says it wasn't directed at me, I don't believe him. Not that it matters, because as my brother said, men are victims of sexual violence just like women are. And it is not appropriate. But it is also not appropriate to walk up to two of your female colleagues and start describing a rape scene right before the dinner break, off of the mic. So, do with that what you will. Thank you so much to Senator Slama for continuing to stand up. I know it's not easy. I know people have not believed you all of the time. But you are an amazing advocate for victims. And your voice is so important, so thank you. And I will end there. Thank you. <laughs>